brighten up those dark mornings. Wheeler, Ollie, and Lecter. Mornings at the Cabin. Mornings at the Cabin, indeed. On your Wednesday morning, Wheeler and Lecter with you. And my mustache smells like coconut oil. Mmm, mmm. That's right. It's coming in kind of sparse, a little greasy. But hey, we're raising money for a good cause. So, there it is. I'll keep this soup strainer on my face until the end of the month. And you know what? Might even go beyond that. Do you call coconut oil your mustache growing media now? I don't know. Is it's, that how I mean, that's what I put on my face every day. I put on co- I put coconut oil in my face, yeah. a little bit in my hair, yeah. my arms, my legs, my belly. Everything. Everything. Just cover yourself with I am shiny oil. AF you in the morning, buddy. shiny. That's right. That's the secret. I got a dewy glow. Is that your skin secret? That is. It's not really a secret. It's just oil. And a, a lot of people tell me you shouldn't use that stuff. You break out. I don't break out. Not on my like not on my face. My butt, on the other hand. No, I'm joking. That's not good breakfast talk. No, no. Well, welcome to mornings at the cabin, and a, a hearty happy anniversary to our friends just a couple of blocks away. You can find this story at cabinradio.ca. JCD celebrating its 40th birthday. That's right. The all nice first commercial radio station. Launched November 13th, 1979, on 1240 AM. They're going to have to change up that liner now. What, what for it years, say? it's been the something, I can't remember what it is, of the North for nearly 40 years. That's right. Now it's been 40 years? Now it's 40 years. You can't say nearly anymore. You guys going to be like, N- uh, 40 plus years? I'm guessing it's going to be the biggest ba 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 for years. <laughs> Just <laughs> blank. That's what I would do. I wouldn't even re-record it. I would just go, <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah. Mornings at the Cabin, the podcast. Today's show brought to you by the Vancouver International Mountain Film Festival at NAC. Go to NACNT.ca for more ticket info. That's right. It's uh, it's coming up. So you want to go there and find out. I'm glad you knew what that acronym was. I know. I, it I was not. I, it just says vim, vim. I was just going to take a stab at it. <laughs> yeah. What were you going to say? Vancouver International MF and Festival. <laughs> MF and Fest. That'd be a great festival. <laughs> International MF. <laughs> let's get at it. Get here. Festival time. <laughs> oh, let's let's try some more acronyms. No, we're just going to get into a festival territory. <laughs> I think uh, that's fine. MacNT.ca for ticket info for the Vimp. 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 Uh, we mentioned this in the opening, but uh, it, it warrants discussion and it warrants uh, a, 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 a little, 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 kind of a reflection of this story at cabinradio.ca, CJCD, um, 40th anniversary. That's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. We both came from there. Yeah, we did. At some point or another, I made a little stop in. Stop in, stop out. But that's what they wanted. They wanted <laughs> to be a stepping stone to something else. And that's great. And it, it taught me. And here we are. It taught me how to do this, which I still don't do very well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, thanks, so, CJC. <laughs> <laughs> now known as the Moose, of course, bought by Vista Radio uh, about twelve years ago in two thousand and seven, but uh, started forty years ago. September, or pardon me, November thirteenth, nineteen seventy nine is when it launched. And uh, you can go see the story at cabinradio.ca. Like I said, uh, Ollie sat down with Charles Dent, who was one of the founding uh, CJC. CJCD directors alongside Derek Squirrel and Reg James. And uh, Eileen Dent carried on as station manager, and they owned CJCD until the acquisition by BC-based Vista Radio in 2007 and uh, became one of the 19 Vista-owned Moose FMs across Canada. There's 19 Moose FMs across Canada? There's not 19. It says it right there in the news. What? And that's in the news. Um, that's a lot of moose. That's a lot of moose. A lot Jeez. of mooses. Change it to the boo. The boo. One hundred boy will in the boo. Um, that's what I always wanted to call it when I was doing the morning show. But uh, so I mean, some great, some great stories from uh, from uh, back in the day. Like that time there was an elephant in downtown. Some classic pictures. <laughs> classic elephant yellow oh, Man, yeah. Uh, not many people know that that ele- that elephant actually stopped over a bunch of cars. It's uh, not in the news. Yeah, it was inevitable. It's, it was inevitable. You can't just have an elephant somewhere and not have it stamp, stamp on something. And there was a lion here? There was too? a lion. Guy had a pet lion. Um, Did that wow. have anything to do with CJCD? Or am I, I don't just think like, so. I think, okay. he, I think the lion was on the show at some point. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, I mean, like, great stuff. Like, interviewing Margot Kidder back in the day because she was born here. Right? She came back uh, for uh, a few months before uh, she came back for the 50th anniversary they uh, had a sit down with Margot Kidder. I mean, it's a pretty good stuff. Mm-hmm. You know? That's awesome. Yeah, 40 years. 40 years. 
40 years. Did you ever, uh, did you listen to CJCD in the mornings when it you were a, a young It was the only thing to listen to. Who was your, your morning man or morning woman or morning folk? I can't, you choice? know what? I don't remember, I don't remember the morning because in the morning my dad would be listening to CBC. Okay. And my mother would be listening to CBC as well. Lauren McGinnis. S- somehow. Lauren McGinnis, still Lauren McGinnis still there, somehow. Hosting the trail. Sometimes like 30 years old, back when I was seven. <laughs> Unky Lauren still pumping out the hits. Um, what a career. Absolutely. Uh, but back in the day, I mean, um, uh, Tanya Kitston. Was uh, I had a big crush on Danny Kitson. Oh, back wow. that's right. Well, we grew up together. Yeah, and uh, she was a couple years older than me, and she was on the radio. And I was just, you know, like when you're a kid, you're like, someone's on the radio. It's like that's pretty cool. Hmm. That's pretty cool. It's... And she was young when she took that. She job was young, too, yeah, right? absolutely. Like, like right out of school, right like out of school. I think 20, she was 21. Like, yeah, 21, 22 years. That's old, crazy. Like that. So like she and she was uh, she was the voice there for a very long time, and uh, yeah. So I think that was my, my one of my biggest memories of CJCD is Tanya Kitson. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. And we've been trying to get her on, the, uh, on the, right here on Cabin Radio, and uh, you know, Tanya, One day. we're calling you out. One right day, now. Tanya. One day, Tanya. You got to get in here. You got to do a show. Um, so yeah, go check out that radio. Uh, that radio. That story. What is going on with my mouth? <laughs> Good lord! What is going on? <laughs> it's been the question since day one of Cabin Radio. I had my cinnamon raisin toast this morning. I had my coffee. What the heck? CabinRadio.ca for more on that story. Wonderful stuff. A uh, you know, big part of Yellowknife. Need to slap a gob of coconut oil in there. Oh, Grease up that oh, mouth oh, a little. The Mornings at the Cabin podcast was recorded before a sort of live, thankfully not in the studio, audience. Good morning. How are you? Say it, say it in your car. That's fine. Just tell me how you're doing. I can feel this. Um, also on cabinradio.ca, YK still hasn't figured out exactly what to do with all its dog lots. The only reason I want to draw you to that, obviously it's an important issue, but also there's just a picture of Kodiak there. How do we get our dogs to take such wonderful pictures? Sarah is like a, a puppy whisperer and like some of the best pictures of puppies I've ever seen in my life are pictures that she's taken of Penny. I think she's like a pageant mom for yeah. dogs. She's incredible. Basically, yeah. And then you got Kodiak, a little eight-week-old pup, just staring lovingly into the ca- I can't get a picture of my dog like this. Maybe she doesn't foster dogs unless they the picture, are yeah. picture perfect, picture perfect puppies, and are like, yeah, just really good at <laughs> sitting still, looking yeah. cute, holding that pose. That's right. Maybe she puts them through the ringer at the mm. SPCA. She's like, I'm not just going to take any dog. I'm Sarah Price of Cab. You understand this, right? That's I'm right. Sarah I'm like, Price take of Cabin dog. Radio. That's right. Our our whole our whole brand identity relies on these cute dogs <laughs> looking at their cutest. This is how we've gotten as far as we've gotten. Yes. So the story is that the city of Yellowknife publicly committed earlier this year to letting uh, the Yellowknife Dog Trotters Association gradually acquire its land in Cam Lake through a payment plan. However, the issue now is that uh, what happens when the dog trotters want to expand in Cam Lake or, uh, and any other operator wants to establish a new kennel? Expand! Expand? How dare they? What? Yeah. So the, the, I mean, you the want point- more Dogs. The point of contention, obviously, is like it's an industrial area with hundreds and hundreds of dogs in it. And now, like, you know, we're starting to build houses around it. So, yes. obviously, people who own the houses nearby are like, well, the dogs bark. It's like, well, yeah, you built your house next to a dog kennel. So, I mean, not, nothing against anybody who's living in Grace. Like, beautiful houses out there, beautiful area. Yeah. It's a it's a good area to actually have some houses uh, to expand uh, expand um, uh, land, the use of land in, the, in Yellowknife. Um, but, I mean, yeah, it's just trying to force, you know, people out. That have well, been there for years and years and years. And, and it's interesting too. I, I imagine I, I, I'd be interested to be a <laughs> a fly on multiple walls in yes. the in the, uh, the the halls of of Grace Lake because, like, I I know for a fact that there are some that really love that they're on the dog mushing route on yeah. Grace Lake there, and you yeah. you have them, you know, you, you see them come like you know right through your yeah. your your front window That's view right. in the winter and uh and, and some love that part of it and obviously there are others that are not big fans of this otherwise this would not it lowers the property be value a i imagine is the, ch- issue. the chief argument is like it probably they they think it lowers their property value or something i mean i imagine yeah well and, and i mean i mean i imagine especially if you're not used to dogs barking maybe you grew up Elsewhere in a co- vast country land where yep. you know you you, <laughs> yep. you didn't have dog kennels didn't have around, dog kennels around, and yeah, yeah. I, I imagine and maybe it gets annoying after a while. But again, they've been there for a long time, long time, longer than any of you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. It's it's just 
that's kind of part of the territory. It's almost as if this story has parallels with other stories here in the North. No. About land and use and who was here first and what we should do with it and who gets to make the rules as to what we do with it going forward. <laughs> I don't know. It feels familiar. It feels like a little bit of a microcosm. I don't know, Jesse. This feels like uncharted territory. Too. Uncharted territory, speaking of which. Pardon my ignorance. Pardon. pardon, pardon well, pardoned. Fair enough. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank, that's, you. thank you very much. Uh, CabinRadio.ca for that news. Obviously, this is an ongoing fight. This has been going on for, for years as to what to do with this place. Mm. Um, but you can find out more at CabinRadio.ca. What do you think we should do with all those ducks? Who, me? Yeah, you. Oh, who, huh? I don't know. Let them let them live. I <laughs> let guess. Him, you know what? Just let them out. That's what this is about, right? Let them roam free. Let them live or let them die. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's, uh, yeah, that's all this is there's about. There's no. There's nothing yeah. in between. There's no in between. Yeah, there's let no them moving live. these dogs. Let them live. Yeah, I'm, all right, I'm, I'm on the live side. I'm on the let live. Uh, let dogs live side. That's right. That's a pretty easy argument. Cabin radio supports dogs. <laughs> I don't know. I, uh, Slam dunk. I don't know if I don't know if we should take a stand on anything. <laughs> but we're taking a stand on dogs. We per- we we like cats. We mm-hmm. prefer dogs. I'm speaking for all of Kevin right now. No, I'm not. I shouldn't say that. No, no, no. You are. I am I? Yeah, I think we all so. Prefer I dogs? think on this one. Oh, prefer dogs. Yes. I thought you might prefer that dogs live. Over, oh yeah, that over them dying. Them dying. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. 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 That seems like an easy one. Yeah. I don't think we're going to lose any ads because of that. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just stick with that. Let them live. I'm fully expecting an email later on. Listen, we didn't really like what you had to say. About <laughs> I'm like, okay, <laughs> fair enough. Sorry about that. All right, meow. Hand over your license and registration. Your registration. Hurry up, meow. Sorry. It, there's something funny here, boy. Oh. Uh, no. Then no, why no. are you laughing, Mr. Larry Johnson? All right, meow, where were we? <laughs> I'm sorry. Are you saying meow? Am I saying meow? I, I just thought... Don't, don't think, boy. Meow, do you know how fast you were going? <laughs> meow, what is so damn funny? I, I could have sworn you said meow. Do I look like a cat to you, boy? Am I no. jumping around on nimbly bimbly from tree to tree? <laughs> no. Am I drinking milk from a saucer? <laughs> no. Do you see me eating mice? <laughs> you stop laughing right now. <laughs> yes, sir. Meow, I'm going to have to write you a ticket on this one. No buts, meow. It's the law. Not so funny meow, is it? Meow. Scenes from the cat. Know the movie? Submit your guest to mailbox at cabinradio.ca or send us a message on Facebook for your chance to win gift certificates to some awesome Yellowknife restaurants, including the Monkey Tree Pub and Steak Restaurant, the Woodyard Brewhouse and Eatery, Flavor Trader, Copper House Eatery and Lounge, or Javaroma. Listen to Cabin Radio every weekday to win or download the Mornings at the Cabin podcast. Duke of Earl from Gene Chandler, only the greatest song about a Duke ever. Wait, no, there's that other one by Stevie Wonder, The Duke. The Duke. Yeah. Sir Duke. Sir Duke. Yeah. Which is even not about, the, not about the Duke of Earl. No. It's really about a lot of people. Mm. This one's about one Duke. Yeah. He's the Duke of Earl. He really focuses in. That's right. And that's what I like. I, 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 like, a, I like a song that tells a story, but yeah. not a bunch of stories. Make a decision, Stevie. That's right. For goodness sake. Keep your eye on the prize. But this morning's show brought to mm. you by the Vancouver <laughs> International Movie Mountain Film Festival. Don't shake your head at that. Uh, the 2019 Vancouver International Mountain Film Festival World Tour its top films uh, will be on the big screen. Head down and enjoy a cold beer. That, I don't think that's legal. Is that legal? No. Enjoy sh- a cold beer or smooth that, wine in the comfort of Max cushy red seats. Enjoy a cold root beer. That's right. Or a smooth, smooth wine gum. grape juice. <laughs> Experience 90 minutes of film screening from everything from environmental documentaries, extreme mountain sports, adventure, canoeing, and kayaking, culture, and more. Show starts at uh, 7.30 on November 15th at the NAC. NAC NACNT.ca for ticket info. Mm. There you go. That's on Friday night. Do not bring your own wine gums. Do not bring your own wine gums. They will be confiscated. Or your own root beer. They will be confiscated. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that was legal. It's it's in the right up. Root beer is fine. It's okay. Can I just talk to you for a second? Yeah. I think we're going to get in trouble for a second. Oh. Just no one's listening. What, I think we just just between you and I. Yeah, I don't think we're allowed to say that. I no no. But it's root beer. But it's root beer. Just it's root beer. Okay, 
root beer and grape juice. Cold wine gums. Which is grape smooth juice. wine gums. Sorry. Smooth Sorry. Wine gums. I love wine gums. Anyway, um, <laughs> Disney Plus launched yesterday mm. uh, after a huge ramp up and obviously just teasing out everything they're gonna they're gonna be creating yeah. they're getting in they're getting in the uh, the same pool as you know Netflix Apple plus uh, HBO now Amazon Prime video uh, crave I've got crave Amazon Prime and Netflix that's what I have don't gloat I'm just saying okay <laughs> you get it I'm rich. Um, <laughs> so this is the big thing we've been talking about this for a while with all these streaming services coming out we're all cutting the cable right because we don't want TV and all that crap but then we're just going to up it back up with streaming services because yeah. everyone's going to have their own streaming service. Yeah. Disney Plus, not unlike the corporation itself, trying to basically own everything so you have one choice. So Disney Plus has, you know, it's got Disney, of course. It's got Pixar. It's got Star Wars. It's got the Marvel Universe. It's even right. got National Geographic. So Disney Plus launched yesterday to a slew of launch issues, oh. a lot of error messages, and a lot oh. of people who not able to connect. That was to be expected yeah, because they expected... Much. Tens of millions of subscribers to try to get in on it on launch day. Right. So that's not to be unexpected. Mm. However, what they've done with some of these things. Oh, what I forgot to mention that list, The Simpsons, because they own, they own 20th Century Fox now as well. You forgot the greatest television show of all time. Well, it was 20 years ago. Um, just saying, just stating facts. I really should have said. Wow. I really should have said everyone instead of you people. But... Um, <laughs> Everyone loves The Simpsons from back in the day. Not just you people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so Disney Plus launched it yesterday and uh, obviously uh, a huge thing. This is a, it's a pretty huge thing. They're, they're taking a lot of properties away from say, things like Netflix and Amazon Prime and stuff like that. Because Netflix yeah. has been kind of the home for Marvel and Disney mm -hmm. for a long time. Riding that gravy train. That's right. Ride that gravy train. Get it done. Um, so they launched yesterday and uh, had a bunch of uh, launch issues. But one of the things we did notice... And I, noticed, I saw this on Reddit this morning, is that they did to The Simpsons what HBO uh, did to The Wire. What did they do? All right, I'll tell you. So when they released The Wire on DVD and Blu-ray, actually, I think just on DVD, because when The Wire was on, standard definition was the thing. Mm -hmm. So standard 16 by 9 aspect ratio on TV. Right. If you don't know, know what that means, that just means square picture. That's what the, the 16, not 16 by 9. Six, yeah, I was going to say 16 four by, by three, 9. 4 yeah, by 3. That's the one. 4 by 3 yeah. is the TV one. Pardon me. 16 by 9 Get is, your is the widescreen right. one. So 4 by 3, standard standard definition, standard uh, frame rate or frame ratio. Yes. So what they did when they released it on DVD is that they remastered it for, for HD, mm -hmm. but then they widescreened it, which means they pushed it on the sides and cropped it on the top and the bottom. So mm -hmm. it looks different. For the wire, not as big a deal. However, when you have something like The Simpsons, especially in their early days, each frame was kind of meant to be, not each frame, but each scene was meant to have visual jokes and visual cues in it. Right. So what they've done is they've done the same thing. They've pushed it out on the sides, and they've they've cropped it on the top and the bottom. So now, they, Homer added about 20 pounds. Homer added about 20 pounds, yeah. and, and Marge is just banging. Um, <laughs> that's terrible. That's terrible. Um, <laughs> but uh, so what What that, What that? happens when that happens, the, the, the example that was shared on Reddit is a prime example. Now, it may seem like small stuff, mm. but like when those... Uh, episodes were written. They were written with all these jokes kind of packed in. Yes. And any any missed joke, you're you're losing out on the the kind of whole picture of. That's it. one less joke that That's we have right. to laugh at. That's exactly right. Um. So they cut out this picture. They they took a still frame of one of the pictures, and it's when Homer's in the Duff Brewery. Yes. And they he's being showed Duff Duff Light and Duff Dry. And what you see in the original picture is that they're all coming out of the same pipe. Right. And what you don't see when it's cropped. Is that the actual joke? You don't get the joke. So there's things like that that are going to be missed. Now, that might not seem like a big deal, but if you're a huge Simpsons that's fan... That's a huge deal. That's a I huge love deal. that joke. That's right. That's right. Thank you. <sighs> Thank you for getting all up in my business. No that. problem. That's right. You need outrage? I'll bring that outrage. Thank you. Thank you. It's about time that someone else was angry in here besides me. <laughs> well, when you start messing with the Simpsons, that's right. you know, that, that's when you really... You really grind my gears. You gonna pal. get you gonna get Disney Plus. I know you're cutting the ca cutting the cord. I don't really know. I mean, I so I have the Simpsons seasons one to ten on DVD. So I don't really need to get it for the Simpsons. I can watch any episode that That's right. I that ever wanted want. to watch yeah. in my my DVD collection. Yeah, Marvel. Nah. Eh. Nah. Uh, Disney. Yeah. There's obviously you know all the Disney, Disney movies. Pixar, right? Um, yeah. we have a good portion of those yeah. in hard copy too. So. Not like a huge draw there. 
Um, what else am I missing? Star Wars. Star Wars. Eh. Uh, you know, I, I see them when they come out, and then I yeah. kind of don't really have any compulsion to see them again after that. I don't. I don't know. Yeah, maybe not. Um, but like eight bucks a month. Yeah, like that's. I mean, right? It's, it's eight bucks for the library, coffees. and you know, like Disney is. You know, Just they've got to buy and stuff. Well, and they got a ton of money. Yeah, they're yeah. going to keep acquiring stuff. They're going to keep make, getting bigger and better. And, and they're going to make yeah. new things that are bigger and better. Like right, like they're pumping a lot of money into a Boba Fett, which was supposed to be a Boba Fett movie, is now going to be a Boba Fett TV series. Ah, with Pedro Pascal, who was um, on Game of Thrones. He was, oh God, why can't I remember his name? Pedro Oberyn Pascal. Martell. Oberyn I, Martell. I think I know who you're talking about, but we all know my my naming of Game of Thrones characters is not not stellar. He gets killed by the mountain in season four. Okay, yep. Yeah, there you Thumbs go. to the eye. There yeah. you go. There you go. There it is. So wait, the spoilers for game for season four <laughs> of Game of Thrones. Um, so yeah, they're going to be pumping a lot of money. And just like Netflix has, pumping a lot of money, except Netflix has gone into a hawk with $20 billion in loans, whereas Disney's just like, oh, you need $20 billion bucks? There you go. Here's $20 billion bucks. That's, That's how it works. It's huh? Disney farting out $20 billion. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, there it is. So Breakfast just, stuck. I don't know if you're going to get Disney Plus. I'm thinking about it. Um, I'm not sure which one to cut out, though, because now Amazon Prime Video is a bunch of old TV shows that I really Well, it like. sounds like Netflix is yesterday's news. I still really like Netflix. Okay. They do some great TV. Brand loyalty. And they've, been, they've been shifting towards only having their own content on there for quite some time. So right. That yeah. kind of makes sense as well. Yeah. All right. There you go. Uh, All right. Tough decisions ahead. That is right. The Mornings at the Cabin podcast. It's been a quiet morning so far, but it's about to get jacked up because Dean Eskich is here to talk about the Vancouver International Mountain Film Festival this Friday night at NAC, and they are the sponsors of this morning's show. You can get t- tickets at NACNT.ca. Start at 7.30. It's 90 minutes of the best, like, mountain film festival stuff. It's their world tour, and they're bringing us their best stuff. Dean, what's up? Hey. Uh, thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah, man, of course. Uh, yeah, so the Vancouver International Mountain Film Festival is happening on Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, got a little, we got a great selection of films covering everything from mountain adventure, paddling, culture, and you know, even an environmental documentary to talk about how we're killing the planet. We got to do something about that. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Fair we enough. should really stop doing that. We're not listening yeah. to anybody else. We should probably be listening to mountain bikers. <laughs> yeah, about it. They're, I mean, they they're know what's up. front line. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah, we also have some really cool partners for this event. We got Overlander Sports. They're uh, donating a door prize. Nice. Uh, Sundog Adventures. You can win kick sliding tour to go out on Back Bay. Uh, Jack Pine Paddles giving away some gear, and they're You've, we're going to be showing one of their their new Northern Guide training program video. Sweet, a uh, cool opportunity for um, for Northerners to become trained river guides. And, oh, there, yeah, right. You know, go out to Nahani and yeah, show people around. <laughs> it's yeah. you know, it's one of the it's living up here and actually being connected to the north and, or connected to the land and like wanting to camp and stuff like that. Going down the Nahani River is something I have always dreamed of watching somebody else do. So. That would be a lot of fun. Watching. <laughs> <laughs> I don't necessarily want to do it myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is yeah. hard. Yeah. <laughs> that's an adventure. <laughs> but you yeah, certainly don't want cool. to guide it. That's right. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, somebody else could do it, and they could be in next year's International <laughs> Mountain Film Festival. So, that would be great. Yeah. It's going to be really cool. We also got uh, the Brew Pub uh, as a sponsor, and they're going to be serving some some of their root beer. Root beer. There you go. <laughs> root beer. Their Some of their li- craft their f- root beer. Their finest libations. Mm. You know, that's right. Lovely. Small batch. In, very. Aged in <laughs> whiskey casks. Oh, very nice. We read that's about some great. smooth wine gums, too. That's right. Smooth that's, wine gums. You can have a nice tasting yeah. we can have. That's right. Oh, wow. <laughs> and they don't make that sarsaparilla anymore. It angries, no. up, the, it angries yeah. up the blood. Yeah. Um, oh. So, okay. So, you got 90 <laughs> minutes of film. So, it's like mostly short films and docs or what? Yeah. Uh, in the past, we, we've run it like, you know, like two and a half hours of film. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a lot. That's in a big one set. day. That's a big set. Yeah. So we're gonna keep it short. Might run over ninety minutes of film. So the whole night will probably run two, two and a half hours. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. You know, with Fair. intermission and yeah. prizes and all that. You know. Awesome. Um, yeah, we got some some longer ones. I think the longest one might be a half hour. Right on. And even some short, like five, six, seven minute ones. That are just you know action packed, cool mi- mountain biking shots and skiing and you know the adrenaline stuff to kind of pepper it in with with some of the longer documentaries. And there's one my personal favorite. Uh, I don't care who you are, you are going to cry. Oh man, what is it? It's called Feel a Vision. It's about uh, 
a veteran from, I think, the Iraq War who loses his vision when he comes back uh, to America and he loses his autonomy. Like, he was a, mm. like an officer yeah. and a grandfather and just, like, an active, per, active member of his community. And then he had to completely, ch- like, reinvent his relationship with, with himself and, mm. and everyone else, like, losing that autonomy. So he learns how to kayak. Okay. Because wow. apparently you can kayak when you're blind because yeah. the water gives you, like, your bearings. That's yeah. right. You yeah, know yeah. where you are and you know how to orient yourself just by feeling the water. Very hmm. cool. So he learns how to kayak, gets really good at it, and then he starts teaching other veterans who are disabled how to paddle. And then he t- wow. and that culminates, they take him on a, on, a, on a river, on a kayak journey through the Grand Canyon. Oh, wow. Hmm. So this blind guy is at the, at the front leading everybody and teaching them, and it's so inspirational, so heartwarming. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah. That sounds very cool. Yeah. Right on. Makes me think I should have learned to kayak with my eyes closed or something, because eyes open, it's... Uh, I'm average at best. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> well, I'll poke your eyes out after this. Thanks, um, buddy. <laughs> yeah, no problem. How much your tickets, Dean? $25. $25? bucks. That sounds like a, a nice night's uh, entertainment for 25 bucks. What are the door prizes? Do you know, or, or we just know that there are some? Yeah, so we have... Uh, Free kick sledding tour from Sundog Adventures. Nice. We have a. Um, it's. Uh, I gotta get a kick sled. I don't know if my dog's strong enough to to get, push me, pull me on her own. I might need your two dogs. You want to borrow well. ours? Yeah. We got a kick sled. Get all three of them. Yeah. They yeah, hate they it. They suck at it. So yeah, maybe <laughs> Betty will pull be pulling in a different directions. <laughs> what else? You got <laughs> fun. Um, a Petzl Tactica he- RGB headlamp. Okay. Right on. Okay. For right. Overlander Sports. I got to get yeah. one of those. Nice. And uh, headgear hats from uh, Jack Pine Paddle. Nice. And, well, we're not giving away beer because apparently we were not allowed to. No. We're <laughs> not even really allowed to mention it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. But there's, uh, are, are they are they auctioning off a cask or something? What are they doing? No, actually, um, Thomas from the Brew Pub is going to be setting up his own little NWT booth. Brewing Company booth yep. Yep. and serving up some root beer. Yeah. Root beer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right on. T- two new flavors of, of root beer. Very nice. Or, or one oh. new flavor and one classic flavor. So, for a total of three root beer flavors. Very nice. Ooh, maybe oh, some oh. cream soda in Ooh, there. Ooh, all right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm bringing back that sarsaparilla. <laughs> yeah. You saw oh, sarsaparilla. That's right. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Dean, that sounds like a, a, a great night. I know this is, how many years have you guys been doing this? Oh, uh, we've done it, I think the first time was 2013, Yeah, okay. and then we took a break for a few years, Yeah, and now it's back. Awesome. Well, it sounds like a great night. 25 yeah. bucks for tickets, nacnt.ca to get those tickets. Uh, Friday night starting at 7.30, sounds like a great time. Going to be some great docs, some inspirational movies, and um, some good root beer from what we hear. Dean, thanks so much for joining us, man. Yeah, thanks for having us. Thanks for listening. Check out more from the show at cabinradio.ca and by following the Mornings at the Cabin Facebook page.